Oh my gosh. How are you? How are you? Fine. I know. I know. Like, how can you answer that question? I know. It is just like, well, I guess we've all, we've like finally all gotten to a point where people don't feel pressure to be like, but great. Like, I'm doing okay. And then yeah. like fear, fear still and like anxiety, like they're just hiding and there is Xanax below. Yeah it's, yeah, it's one of those kinds of things. Thank you for doing this. Oh I love God, it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Oh my God, I, have so, I have so many questions for you. I'm excited for you to eat. Um, but I'm trying to do this. I guess like a podcast video cast. Yeah. Is, is that a thing? You would I know. So. <laughs> I feel like because you're younger, you know more things. I, uh, thank you so much. But I feel like I, <laughs> I feel like I don't actually know anything, but I do feel like oh. video casts are a thing. I'm, I'm into a video cast because I learned how to do Zoom and I feel like I'm, a, I'm like basically a millennial now. Like I'm <laughs> in it. But so let me, I'll introduce you because if people are actually just listening, if that's still a thing, they yeah, need well. to know who you are. <laughs> this is Jen D'Angelo, I can't even speak, D'Angelo. And um, you're everything. You're an actress, a writer, stand-up comedian. And um, we met many years ago while you started your career. Yeah, that was so crazy. I can't believe that was so long ago. It, it feels like yesterday. One, I think, because you look the same. And two, I'm always like, if I'm in a situation where I like want to talk to somebody, I'm always like, where's Jen? Like, you know, like in an, like if I'm at a desk or something, I'm like, what's happening with Jen? Like looking out for help. Um, no, so first of all, which it is a long time ago, we worked on The Big Bang Theory and now you're an executive producer on Young Rock. Yeah, Cody. Well, co EP, but still, oh, that's crazy. I know, it's insane. Uh, You're so young for an EP credit, and I think that's amazing. Thanks. It's very insane. Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. It feels like it like has taken 100 years and also one day. It's like a very weird, uh, you know, just time is very strange. What was your actual first writing credit? Because I don't even, was it Workaholics? No, it was Cougar Town. Oh, right. Oh my God. Yeah. No, Cause like my memory, I shouldn't, like, I don't want to speak for you, but I, when you were PAing, it was, I think you just wanted to get out. Like, you know? I, yeah. I mean, it was, I, uh, I think about that a lot because I'm always like was I like <laughs> I'm always so worried that I was like an obnoxious PA uh like in retrospect uh and yeah it just was like that feeling of being like realizing really quickly that like I wasn't going to advance there because there were just like so many people who had been there for way longer and that were like ahead of me uh in terms of like moving up the ladder and so I just was like if I stay here I feel like it'll take like years and years to get where I want to go uh I mean I fully agree I don't think you were like look I I was in the mail room and I did what you did too and I just remember getting phone calls and being like this isn't okay this is or just like walking out I mean do you tell people that you had to put together a death star in late with Legos <laughs> that weren't fully there they're like put this together but we don't have all the pieces so just figure it out Yes, that's my favorite like TV story, which is like, this was season five of Big Bang. So it was like the season where it really was like, this is the biggest show on TV now. Like we hit a hundred episodes, like just a huge success, like juggernaut. And they, yeah, had to buy this Lego Death Star set and to save money, they bought a used one from eBay that was partially assembled. So like, <laughs> it was just way harder. And I was like, surely we could afford a new one <laughs> no, that's how we made that's how we made that tv show great we we made sure to skim on the things that would make your life miserable yeah but 
You cut through. I know, and then I, I mean, look, I don't, I don't think you're, I don't, I disagree with you fully for those thoughts because, like, I even remember you calling me in the middle of the night, being like, um, I think there's a mountain lion following me, and I can't get back to the office. I'm like, where are you? You're like, I'm on the lot still. I'm like, I mean, you just, I feel like every night was a story like that. That was crazy. That that night with the it was a bobcat. Uh, bobcat. Or no. Or was it a mountain lion? It was like you happened multiple times. Like you, <laughs> you were like the only person who saw this animal, but like it happened to you multiple times. I'm like, I, I think you just need to go. Yeah, like I'm like, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> you gotta go. I think there was like one conversation you were like, I just don't know what to do. I'm like, just go be an actress. Just <laughs> go be an actress. Just do it. Not, and look how that turned out you, and now you're a writer I mean it, yeah yeah exactly <laughs> it's like no um one of my so also because I don't like if you were to look you up on IMDb I'm sure this isn't there but one of my favorite things that you also did was the the Titanic the comedy version of the Titanic oh yeah and I oh, went yeah. to that I went to that reading with a friend. I was like, oh, my friend Jen wrote this. It's supposed to be great, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, blown. Oh, I was laughing so hard. It was so good. Thanks. That was like uh, a true dream come true, like for real. Like I, because uh, I had wanted to write a movie for so long uh, after like being in TV. And uh, it just was so hard. Like I couldn't crack it at all. And uh my husband actually had had like a meeting with a uh, with a writer who said that when she had writer's block, she just made a list of things that she liked and like let that spark an idea. Uh, and I was like, I guess I'll try that. And my list was like truly so dumb. It was like dogs, pizza, and the movie Titanic. <laughs> so good. It was so good, and it was so funny. And P.S. He wasn't when I when we worked together. He was still your boyfriend. Oh so yeah. Now you're married and you have a dog. I mean, things Great. have really progressed. I know. Yeah. The dog is the biggest thing. That really made me feel like I'm an adult now and I have a family. <laughs> you have a family. I mean, I see your Insta stories and I'm so curious what he's doing all of the time. He's a wild boy. He's crazy. He's really he's insane. He like really is he has like a personality. Like when we first got him, we got a dog trainer because we were like, this is our first time getting like a puppy. Like we want to like make sure he's like a good dog citizen. <laughs> and the dog trainer immediately upon like first meeting him, she was like, he's a very spunky fellow. He's going to wow. be very interesting. And we were like, whatever, you're weird. And now we're like, he is a very spunky fellow and he is very interesting. So you, you met a trainer slash like dog psychic. Like it was yeah. two one. Wow. That's awesome. She's um, oh, I'm so happy for you. I mean, like I saw, so my friend Adam uh, is, he plays uh, Vince in Young Rock. He plays oh, Young. Hello. Yeah. So I was like looking at the credits. I was so excited because I was like watching, I started watching the show because of him. And then I'm like, God, Jen, you're everywhere. And I love it. Like, it's so exciting and it's so cool because, I mean, most people know in this business, it's not linear. Yeah. And it's kind of like a roller coaster ride. And I'm like so impressed with your career. It's awesome. Thanks. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's very exciting. But yeah, it is like, uh, yeah, that feeling of like knowing it's a roller coaster is so stressful <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Even when things feel like they're going well, you're like, well, it might not last. It's very weird. But so, I mean, my friend, I was just talking to my friend Beth, who's a showrunner at Warner Brothers. And um, she's like, you know, you get so excited because you're like, okay, great. I have an overall deal. Like I could breathe. And then you're like, no, you can't because you don't know what's going to stick. You don't know what the next yeah. day is going to be. And you know, I mean, that's like for me as a freelance person, like I never know what show I'm going to be on. If I'm going to be called, do I have to like call somebody and be like, Hey, I'm, I'm still working. Like it's constant. So, um, but more importantly, like do writers eat soup? I mean, like, do they eat soup in the writer's room? That's really what we need to know. I mean, I love a soup. That is like, uh, truly the thing that I miss the most is 
lunch just like in the pandemic I mean there's a lot of things I miss in the pandemic right, right. <laughs> you know, but like, like happy normal life but um Right. But I do miss lunch mostly because like you could always get a little soup. <laughs> yes. I, like I don't think I don't honestly because I I I see actually this I was thinking about this too. We worked together. You were a writer on Happy Together, and I was in the booth switching. Yeah. I never saw you. Like I feel like I know that's that's the bummer part about switching is like I never get the inside gossip of like what's going on in the office and like this and that. And I'm sure you know, cause like writers stick together. They like kind of walk in groups, they <laughs> yes. sit in groups. And so like, whenever I saw you, I'd be like, hey Jen, you know, like, cause like I'm, oh. I'm upstairs. I'm with the sound guys now. It really was so crazy. I feel like every tape night I was like, I should go visit Tracy in the booth. And I oh, got really? like, so excited to do it. And then I would just be like, it's weird when I leave for a long time. Like anytime one person leaves, you're like, where'd they go? Like people, that's the thing. People don't realize like with writers, they stick together and like, it's like the cool club. It's like, and then when somebody knows somebody, you'll be like, uh, okay. <laughs> like, I'm just gonna, like, I'm, you know, when I was Andy's assistant, like back in the day, I didn't know you then, but when like I could sit with the writers and people, I just blend it in. Yeah. But like when I come downstairs in my heavy like vest and scarf, because I'm so cold upstairs, people are like, no, you can't. That's a you cold woman. Be. You can't. Yeah. Like you could go upstairs. You could go back up. Like, why does she have like a walkie? That's weird. <laughs> No, but um, I can't, I was like thinking about that. I'm like, oh my god, we worked on Happy together, but I never saw like I never saw you. And when I did, it's like super exciting because you're like, oh my god. Um, but as as writers, you guys get to um, eat meals together, this and that. I don't think from what I take, I don't think soup is a big one. I'm gonna push soup when you guys come back from the pandemic and you're actually in a room. I'm I'm gonna push soup, and that's what I gave you to try i'm so excited by the way uh, also i don't think people in the room also eat that healthy i'm assuming i don't know no they really don't i remember i worked on a show uh with one writer who was doing a diet and like it was very weird we were just like what are you doing like they got it was one of those meal delivery services so they would have like a meal you know, like a set thing, like every lunch. And so they wouldn't order anything and they would just like sit and eat their like very healthy looking. You stopped walking. She meal. was not able to walk in the group and you were like, go, go sit up in the switch. Yeah. Like you were like, you're dead. Yeah, go be she, a she, woman over there. She didn't get an episode that season, that poor, poor yeah, girl. Yeah, she was tired. Yeah, well, you know, that's what I get it. Okay, so wait, what did I send you to try? Um, so you sent me the summer minestrone, which I'm very excited about. Okay, great. Uh, and lentil, I think. Oh, you don't like lentil, I feel like, from your facial expression. <laughs> I just got scared that I was misremembering that it was like lentil and something, but I th it's just lentil, right? It's just lentil. Just like lentil soup. Yeah. I will say so I was more excited initially about the summer minestrone, and so this one, I uh I heat this one up on the stove <laughs> and then the lentil you're like fuck it the lentil was microwaved because I was like I don't want to I don't want two pots to wash and I don't want to wash them out so you? I'm so sorry you, you do you so um I'm gonna creepily watch you like we discussed it's my okay. it's not as creepy as you think you know because it's so fast like I didn't even see it like you just it's so fast. So you, oh my God. you ate the so summer fun. minestrone. Is it the one with the noodles, the lentil noodles or no yeah. noodles? Lentil noodles. Oh, I, I'm saying it's good. You might not think it's good. This, no. this is for you so to good. review. Okay. It's amazing. Okay, it's like good. so fresh. No, it tastes like truly so fresh. <laughs> like the vegetables taste so good. Oh my it's God, amazing. Jen. Well, that's why when I was switching. So as you know, writers get to like schmooze at the craft service and they get to um I don't know like go into the green room and drink wine I don't know if that's still a thing no, I never did that that was always way too scary to me so like when I became a switcher you get five minutes you either pee or you mm -hmm. go heat something up and I started making soup and 
it was quick and that was it. Is that really how this started? Yeah, I got sick and I got sick when I came back to LA and I had to change my diet and I started like, I kept losing weight. Like I kept losing weight. Um, I got so many compliments. People were like, you look amazing. And I'm like, I'm very ill, but thank you. That's um, why like, you just don't comment on people's appearances in my life. <laughs> like you can comment on like things they can easily change, like a haircut, an outfit. Right. You don't know what like, else. Even if, right. Wear. Even if you, if you got like a really short haircut and somebody's like, oh, it'll grow back. Yeah. It'll grow back. <laughs> And that's happened to me. Like I've cut a mullet by accident. Really? I'm fine. It'll, I can put it up and it'll grow back. But like when somebody's like, you look amazing. I'm like, well, how did I look before I was actually very sick? But thank yeah. you. Like I'm um, unhealthy. I'm <laughs> super unhealthy. And I was having a hard time putting down food. And so um, I started making soup and um, yeah, I started gaining weight again. And like, then it became like, oh, what other soups can I make? Because also it, you could make a batch and freeze it and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. That's a, I should tell listeners, that's a TV term, like <laughs> yada, yada, yada. Like if they don't know. Yeah. A TV, but fan. it's, yeah. And for me in TV, especially when you're in the crew, it's really um, hard to eat healthy when like you're spending 12, 14 hours a day, like just picking at stuff. And so my business became, what can I eat healthy and I could bring to work? Given, I would be like walking from the parking lot to like stage five with the refrigerator, like on my shoulder, <laughs> I still was able to eat healthy. So hopefully one of these days we could get into TV, make it a little bit healthier. Yeah. Whatever. It is like, it's so hard. Like anytime being on set and stuff, like, yeah, you're just like, so you're stressed out and you're tired, which is just like, all you want is bad food that'll make you feel good at the moment. Uh, and that's all that you have. Yeah. Um, I've switched to the lentil, by the way. Also, oh, very good. Oh my God. And you were so apprehensive about it. I know. It. This one had an uphill battle. It was microwaved. Oh it was judged. It was fully judged, but I'm so glad um, that you like it. I'm glad you liked everything. This is a success. Oh my gosh. This is so exciting. I also was just so excited. Like I food like little food treats and food adventures have really just like kept me sane I feel like in quarantine like uh all these like pop-up pandemic businesses I'm just like sure I'll try them like <laughs> listen if you want to try anything we do a lot of tastings and I am happy to send things your way just let me know we do meals and so I'm always like I wonder if that meal is good so I always like to hear feedback and you know yeah. a lot of times you don't get feedback so I'm happy to send you stuff Jen and then oh you could be the girl in the writer room, the writer's room who has her own meals. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no, I get fired. <laughs> you won't get fired. You won't get fired. I feel like this is yeah. like our meals, our soups. I feel like The Rock would like it too. Like he would be like, this is great. Yeah. Yes, I, I do. I know that you have an obsession with him, but I actually think that he might be the best person in the world. Like I follow him. I follow his career. I love his movies. He's such a good guy such a good guy like I I didn't even really get to meet him at all like <laughs> while making that you've show. been obsessed with him for years I've been obsessed with him for years like since a child like I used to wrestle as him oh well that's WWF Smackdown on PlayStation <laughs> wow I thought yeah. you meant like you were running oh, around imagining. <laughs> yeah but either way is great yeah I mean the other way is a little weird but <laughs> um but yeah I've loved him for so long and then yeah he's just like I just love him as like a presence and he's just this very like positive but like shit talking like tough guy sensitive man it's a very like weird uh brand he has it all masculinity yeah he's got it all um but yeah he's the best and like he I one time just ran into him on the lot before I worked on the show and he held the door open for me and was such a gentleman. And it was like an A plus celebrity interaction. <laughs> like, truly think, just, you did know. you post about that? Cause I feel like I, yeah, you, yeah. I posted I in depth about it. Cause I was like buzzing afterwards. It was so exciting. <laughs> I, I like, think I, I was very excited door. for you. Yeah. You know, that kind of, you. <laughs> well, one, here's the thing. And I, 
like my, I said this to my dad whenever like I would be on a show and meet an actor that I really liked and it's happened a lot I'd be like oh my god they were so nice they were amazing and my dad has always said I don't know why you're so surprised when somebody is nice like you should be more surprised when somebody's not nice I'm like there's so many people that are not nice that like I'm always take like I'm always like surprised when an actor or actress is like super nice and you're like you know yeah and that that actually that happened to me in my first show I worked on two and a half men and Charlie Sheen believe it or not was like the nicest person at least to me you know it's like that's such a I love that philosophy from your dad as like a life philosophy of like be surprised when people are mean not nice Uh, which is good but yeah it definitely feels like the other way just because like it's not even that like actors are usually mean it's just like they usually have like a lot of shit going on and people like want a lot of stuff from them so they just like don't think to like introduce themselves to literally everybody and like everybody knows who they are but they feel weird because they don't know who everyone is sometimes sometimes they are just really mean but (laughs) and they don't care about anybody I was on the Warner Brothers lot I worked there for eight years and um I saw this guy that I thought I worked with you know like you've been on all the lots like every everybody kind of like meshes together Mm -hmm. like you like you can't place where you work them it's kind of the best part about tv but also like the worst because you're like oh I'm getting older like I can't (laughs) remember and I ran into this guy and I came over and I'm like hey how are you and he was like I'm good how are you and we were like and we hugged and he was like it's so good to see you I'm like I'll see you soon walked away get into Central Park order my coffee and then I'm like (gasps) it was Harrison Ford I've never worked with Harrison Ford I never I've seen him as in the and he thought I was somebody else and he couldn't have been nicer and we fully hugged I hugged Indiana Jones. Oh my God, that's amazing. So yeah, so I think actors are all, like they probably are approached so often, yeah. you know, but I have whatever. a similar-ish, slightly different story um, about Simon Helberg, our dear friend from Big Bang. Oh, I love, oh, Simon's really, oh my God, now I'm it's super, tell me. He's the best, he's so nice. He was so like- nice one of those people that was like introduced himself to everybody on the crew and like wanted to make everyone feel comfortable like so great uh I feel like everyone on that cast was really nice but uh but Simon uh lives near me and I was at a Starbucks this was like um, I think like near the beginning of the pandemic I feel like it was like maybe a little over a year ago but Simon was in Starbucks and he was wearing sunglasses and I just hear someone be like, Jen. And I turned and I just like, wasn't expecting to see him and he was wearing sunglasses. So it just like took me a second to be like, and he saw in my eyes that I was confused. And as I was realizing it was Simon, he lifted his sunglasses and was like, it's Simon. (laughs) And the second he did that people came up to him like immediately and they were like yeah like asked him for pictures and stuff and he was like very gracious but I felt so bad because I was like you were totally incognito in here you ruined it for me reveal yourself I feel so bad (laughs) Uh, reveal yourself hey Jen (laughs) and you're right he is he was one of the nicest guys ever on that show yeah so nice yeah. Oh man, that's a great story. I feel so bad that I ruined his little morning coffee pickup. <laughs> but getting... you know what? He was probably so excited to see you. Yeah. I don't, not for nothing, like you left before I left. The fact that like anybody remembers me from the show, I get like super excited about too. Me too. Yeah. Uh, like, I know. I was like also so excited. I was like, ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um talking about feeling bad I've always felt bad about this and I just want to bring it up again and I know we've discussed at length but man um I always feel bad about that two-hand touch football game that I made you come to and then you got thrown in a ditch by one of my friends and you had to like whisper to tell me Tracy 
Tracy, um, your friend just threw me in a ditch. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I think that was like the last time we hung out as friends because <laughs> you were just afraid of every time I invite you. So fun and and yes, quite scary. Like, I was like, I was like, I'm not, I'm not built for this level of competition. Like, I really can't. It was very fun, but I have such a vivid memory of like the photos that we took at that because I remember like my team I think won and we were taking like victory photos, but I'm like way separated from the group. <laughs> So out of place. In shock. You were beat, you were beaten up and like, yeah. I I mean I'll I'll have to post one of those pictures. I have them. No, I love those games, but they were friendly. Nobody there played sports. Like that was the thing. Like none of us like were good at it. And then I invited this one other person and you you just got tossed. I felt so bad about for years. Oh, no, I mean, it was the best. I wanted to bring up this. I mean, I'm, I'm floating all over the place while you eat the soup, which I love that you're doing. Do you realize how big of a deal it is that you're writing the Hocus Pocus movie? Or you might have be finished with it. You might be finished with it. Um, I'm not finished with it. Um, I, it truly, I am, it's a giant deal to me also. Like I love that movie so much. Um, and there was like a time after I pitched on the, after I pitched to write the sequel, there was a time where I thought I didn't get the job. Uh, and I was so sad. And like, it was a combination of being like, oh, I'm like so sad I didn't get that job. And then also like this feeling of like, I like no one else could write that movie, but me, like I'm the biggest <laughs> fan of Hocus Pocus. Like I've seen that movie like truly 200 times. like. I love it so much. I watch it every Halloween. And then when I got the job, I then felt like such a baby for being so <laughs> crazy about thinking that I didn't get it. Uh, and I was so excited. And then when I sat down and just like literally wrote like exterior Salem, I was just like, ah, like this is so exciting. Like I can't believe this is happening. Uh, so great. Yeah. I mean, it's huge. I mean, I, I, I'm like, when I saw that, I'm like, what I go this is huge I mean it's such a staple like everybody knows that movie I mean I think that's so cool that you're doing it you know what I'll wrap up my soup questions with you this is the yeah. this is a you're a writer you're a co-ep you're writing hocus pocus you on your downtime still do improv at UCB I think right yeah uh before or at least when it still existed last year. We'll see what happens. When it comes so to sorry us. about that. Sorry to bring up that. Um, that's terrible. Um, I mean, how, how dare you? I wasn't thinking I'm, about it at all. <laughs> I'm a terrible person. Um, one, I'm going to ask you a question about soup and then I'll ask you a question about like if what, what listeners would want to know. If you, um, if there was a soup sitcom, what would it be called? Oh my gosh. Um, it's definitely going to be a pun on super. I'm assuming it's network. Definitely <laughs> network for sure. But yeah. Um, yeah, like super sibs and it's about like a brother and sister who run like a soup company. <laughs> Just going to write this down really quick <laughs> and take notes, you know. Pitch meeting. That's basically yeah. what we're doing right now. Yeah, exactly. I like it. Super sibs. I like it. Um, maybe I, maybe I could get like a small role in it. Yeah. Okay. Here. I mean, we could be the super sibs. Oh, Jen, I love that idea. Oh my God. Do, really quick. Do you love that I found a pitch? I wrote a script called Viv and Sophie about my best friend being on a reality show. It was based on my friend, Teddy, who ends up being in life on a reality show. I know. So I, like, yeah, like your dog trainer, somewhat psychic. And then on that pitch, I, I found it in my house and like my parents' house. I'm like looking through it and I, I cast you. Like I, I, I put you in it. And I was like, oh my God, I love this. That was so, so nice. Uh, You're very so, funny. Yeah. Also, I just have to say, every time you popped up on Real Housewives, I would get so excited. 
I was like, Tracy. <laughs> hey, my sister was just like, can you brush your hair for these things? So I was like, I'll try. I'll try. Talking about sieves. You know? So yeah. They're going to tell you that. for super sieves. <laughs> Oh, Jen, I'm so glad we talked. I'm so, I miss you and I, um, I'm so excited for you. Every time like all I see stuff, I'm like, this is great. Um, I love it. And I also follow the adventures of your dog. So I love <laughs> that we could still connect in that way. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. No, it's so good to see you. This is so, so good to see you. But I do wish you the best of luck with Young Rock and I hope you get to hang out with the Rock. I hope mm -hmm. he finds out, I hope he finds out all the things you know like that you you know played him as a kid but not played him as a kid yeah uh and also that my wedding was fast five themed that's the okay. biggest <laughs> I didn't know that you just blown me away and I can't wait for you to sit down with him and have this conversation it's fantastic <laughs> we should we'll go on a hike we'll discuss super sibs it'll be a business hike <laughs> we can oh write it <laughs> I love business hikes I'm all about it I get my best ideas at Runyon, mainly from watching other people, but I get my best ideas there. So I haven't been to Runyon in like truly eight years. That'll be <laughs> a very exciting return. I'll love, I, you know what, Jen, I'll go with you. And if I'm, I start to breathe heavy and like hyperventilate, we're on the same page. Great. You're, you're new and I'm just having issues breathing. I'm, <laughs> I'm into it, but I do love a hike and I haven't gone. And I'm, I like, I just, I think once I get vaccinated, I'll feel better about it. I did go to Runyon during the pandemic and I went really early, but when I was coming down the mountain, it was so packed. Yeah. And I was like, what? And so I like started like walking faster and I'm like, I gotta get out of here. And I haven't been back since. <laughs> I had the exact same experience in Griffith. I like walked up to the observatory and it was totally fine. Like no one else was around. And then yeah, walking back down, it was just mobbed. Right. All right. I'll talk to you soon then. Okay, cool. All right. Thanks. She was a video switcher in TV at the time. Then whoops, suddenly that girl's got line. Her health is back on track because she switched up her diet. And now she's forcing.